Well, I commend Tyson, because he, he's one of the guys that paved the way for me to be where I'm at. You know, he's a legendary champion. And the only thing I have to say about Mike Tyson is, everyone is always trying to judge Mike Tyson. He lived his life the way he wanted to live. Meanwhile, Jake Paul's choice to take on 58-year-old Mike Tyson has been called disgusting by KSI. In an exclusive chat with Mirror Fighting, KSI accused his rival of trying to take advantage of Tyson. He said, I find the whole thing cringe. I just don't buy the whole event. I don't think the event is going to happen at all. I think Mike Tyson is just too old. You know, boxing is a young man's game, and I feel like once you hit about 40, 40-something 40 is when you start to really decline. I just think that it's a complete mismatch, and Jake is trying to take advantage of a very old Mike Tyson. Tyson, and I think it's disgusting. Tyson, who last stepped into the ring in 2020 for an exhibition match against Roy Jones Jr., has brushed off claims that he's too old to take on Paul, dismissing his critics as merely jealous. However, KSI thinks the legendary former undisputed heavyweight champion is about to get a dose of reality, saying, it's just Mike Tyson's mindset. He still feels like he's that 19-year-old killer, but in reality he's not, and Jake Paul is just trying to take advantage of him. But I mean, we're used to Jake Paul fighting old people, so it is what it is. KSI, who initially gained fame on YouTube has been anticipated as a potential opponent for Paul since he challenged him back in 2018 after his victory over fellow YouTuber Joe Weller in his debut boxing match. However, KSI is currently sidelined with a hand injury, forcing him to withdraw from the upcoming Misfits boxing event in Dublin next weekend. The Watford-born sensation, known for his dual talents in music and the ring, was set to take on Slim Albaher and MMA veteran Anthony Taylor in a unique 2v1 tag team showdown. However, instead of trading blows, he'll be hitting the stage for a live concert at the sold-out event. Amid the buzz, Mike Tyson, undeterred by skeptics questioning the fight's merit, boldly flaunted his training regimen. In tandem, Jake Paul, never shy to engage in a verbal sparring match, countered with sharp retorts, asserting his role in luring Tyson into this high-profile showdown. With the battle set to make its global debut on Netflix, both contenders are not just preparing to clash in the ring, but also jockeying for supremacy in the court of public opinion. Originally slated for July 20th, the eagerly awaited showdown was pushed to November 15th after Mike Tyson was forced to step back due to a severe health scare. The 58-year-old boxing icon encountered complications from a painful ulcer flare-up, prompting the need for a delay. The delay has only fueled doubts among critics, who argue that Tyson's age and health concerns make the fight not just risky, but potentially dangerous. Despite this, Tyson shows no signs of backing down. At the press conference, he emphatically stated that he is driven by the challenge, undeterred by the growing skepticism. I'm doing this because I can. Who else can do it but me? Tyson asserted, dismissing any doubts about his readiness. He added, let's look at it. Who else is he going to fight to make this happen? You just have to listen to the facts. We got a YouTuber fighting the greatest fighter that ever lived. Despite criticism surrounding the significant age difference and initial postponement due to Tyson's health concerns, the promotion for the Jake Paul vs. Mike Tyson fight continues unabated. On his YouTube channel, Michael Bisping offered his perspective on the press conference leading up to the bout. While acknowledging the comical nature of the matchup, he expressed intrigue regarding the potential revelations that the event might bring. However, Bisping remained skeptical, questioning its ability to generate genuine excitement for what he described as an absurd spectacle and a mockery of a fight. He further emphasized his lack of conviction in the potential for the event to truly captivate the audience. So, let's see what this press conference delivers. We know the fight is a joke, let's be honest, but let's see what the press conference delivers. See if it can get us any more excited for this absolute sh show. This force of a fight, okay? Uh, I I'm not very... Uh, Convinced it will. During the news conference, Michael Bisping's concerns were not alleviated. Instead, Paul's belligerent attitude towards the jeering crowd, exemplified by his statement, you're just like Mike Tyson, you were good 20 years ago, indicated to Bisping that Paul was giving up before the fight even began. Bisping criticized Jake Paul, calling him a tool bag, and pointing out his admission of fighting an older opponent as a sign of weakness. While Bisping acknowledged Mike Tyson's legendary status, he emphasized that Tyson was far past his prime. Bisping expressed satisfaction that Paul was finally finally facing the long overdue backlash from the public. The upcoming showdown between Paul and Tyson is more commercially driven than a genuine rivalry. It marks the debut of live combat sports on Netflix, offering substantial financial incentives for all involved parties. However, while Paul portrays the fight as a crucial step in establishing himself as a genuine boxer, Bisping dismisses it as a mere money-making scheme. Bisping launched a scathing attack on Jake Paul, dismissing him as a mere sideshow and a mockery of the combat sports world. He branded Paul an imposter, a pretender and a fraud, challenging him to step up and truly test himself. Bisping emphasized that the essence of fighting lies in personal growth and dismissed Paul's claims of being a fighter as annoying. While recognizing Paul's business acumen, Bisping remained unconvinced by his attempts to portray himself as a legitimate fighter. You are a disgrace to the 
combat sports world. Mike, I love it. You're an imposer. You're a wannabe. One of the most. You're a fake. All time fighting what you said. Challenge yourself, you pathetic man. You pathetic individual. Fighting is about challenging yourself. Granted, businessman, yeah, You're killing it in that regard. But don't give me this fight of. That's what gets on my nerves. Reflecting on Mike Tyson's imposing legacy, Bisping vividly recalled the fear he instilled in opponents during his prime. Describing Tyson as a straight killer and one of the most menacing figures ever to grace the ring, Bisping emphasized that Tyson's era of dominance is now a thing of the past. Drawing parallels to his own journey, Bisping noted that at 45, he is a far cry from the untamed, indomitable fighter he was at 25. He imagined himself in Jake Paul's shoes at 26 and couldn't fathom the absurdity of facing a 58-year-old Tyson in the ring. Tyson was a terrifying individual. He was a terrifying prospect. To go up against that man in his prime, Jesus Christ, he's one of the scariest individuals that we've ever seen throughout any form of combat sport. The man was a straight killer, was, again, the key word. I'm 45. When I was 25, I was a different person. I was a maniac. I was out of control, and I would have fought anybody. And if I was Jake Paul right now at 26 years old, and you said to me, we're going to give you someone that's 58 years old, I'd have been like, oh my God. Bisping went on to say that if he were in Jake Paul's shoes, he'd be floored by the thought of earning $40 million or whatever the sum might be to step into the ring with someone like Mike Tyson at his age. He noted that he'd have turned down such an offer, insisting on a rival closer to his own age for a genuine test of skill. According to Bisping, this is the kind of response a true fighter would have and should have. You're going to pay me to do this? You're going to pay me? $40 million, whatever the price tag is, to go out there and beat up a guy like that? Oh my God, I would have said, stick it up your ass. Give me someone who's my age because that is not competition. And that is what a true fighter would say and should say. Meanwhile, the ongoing feud between the Paul brothers and Floyd Mayweather has become a fixture in the world of boxing. This animosity first sparked in 2021 with the debut match between Logan Paul and Mayweather. Before that, a heated confrontation almost broke out between Jake Paul and Mayweather. So what you supposed, who you supposed to be? I'm, I'm just working, man. Shit. What happened? You're not tough anymore since your loss? What happened since your loss? Yo, we gonna bust him up, guys? I told you before, put that Yo, let's bust him up. Where are you running, Jake? Where are you going since your fight? Since you lost? What's up, Jake? Where are you going, Jake? Oh, he's running! He's running! Look at him! Logan Paul recently shocked viewers on Asterisk in Depth with Graham Benzinger Asterisk by unveiling a startling detail. Floyd Mayweather still holds a deep-seated grudge against Jake Paul. According to Logan, the bitterness between Mayweather and Jake is far from over. Logan Paul expressed, Jake hasn't been without a security guard since that moment. Floyd has goons who'd kill a man for $200. Here's another video, in case you haven't seen it before, of Jake and Floyd fighting during which Paul took Floyd's hat. <laughs> Mike Tyson just appeared on the Impulsive podcast where Logan warned Mike about Jake Paul's darkest secret ahead of their November 15th fight. I do care. I care about you. And I care about my brother. And I know the path he's on right now. And it's ruthless, Mike. I agree. It's pretty cool. As the clock counts down to Tyson's fight with Jake Paul inside Arlington's AT and T Stadium on Navi, 15, anticipation is growing for a bout that will feature a 31-year age gap between Iron Mike and the Problem Child, who is coming off a dominant win over bare knuckle fighter Mike Perry last month. In one of the more ominous moments on the podcast, Logan revealed personal details about his brother that should send shivers down the spines of boxing fans entering the Netflix-sponsored fight. And, and I just feel like I want you to be okay in there, Mike. And I want you, you got to take him serious, Mike, because he's- I take he, him extremely seriously. I take him extremely seriously. These people don't take him serious. No, they don't. And that's, it's such a mistake because he's a, he's a, he's a real killer. After Tyson argued that he still got that famous old school tough guy beast inside him, Logan issued a warning to Mike that his brother wouldn't be playing around either. Logan said, Mike, I'm going to be honest with you. I love you, Mike. And I'm very nervous for you. I care about you. And I care about my brother. And I know the path he's on right now. And it's ruthless. You got to take him seriously. The Maverick continued, noting how his brother wanted to be a Navy SEAL before he started boxing in high school. Logan continued, he's a real killer, Mike. He wanted to go kill people on behalf of his county. The box 
boxing icon didn't flinch and explained that he's fearful of his 13-year-old son because anyone is capable of killing. Mike responded, In my life, the way I've lived my life and what I've seen, anyone is capable of killing you. So you should be apprehensive for anyone. And that's just my life, the life that I live. Everyone around me, anybody I know is capable of killing me. Even if I don't know you, they're capable of killing me. I don't sleep on them. I'm not overconfident with anybody in life. Logan further questioned if Tyson had permitted Jake to do real damage to him when they fight, and if there any behind-the-scenes talks had occurred to prevent anyone from getting hurt. Tyson replied by saying, You know what's going on. There's no patty cake going on. This is what's going to happen. Two men are going to fight. Somebody's going to win. They might fight again. And then they go to their separate banks, and life goes on. Tyson also gave an update about his health and said that he's feeling beautiful now after having a medical scare some time ago. How's your physical health? I'm doing great. You know, I had a problem. Um, what was that stuff called again? Baby, what's that? No. Huh? Uh, also, also, I had also, also, yeah. Oh, that's not that big. Of, I mean, it's a big deal. Oh, it's, can, oh, you it, can get past it. Yeah, I got past it. Thank God. Mike also said that he's trying to control his dark side, but fails due to which he's getting into this fight with Jake Paul. Mike said, I wish I could stop that guy. That guy haunts me. I wish I could stop that guy. I wish that guy dies, but he's here to stay. He wants to come back every second of my life. It's so easy for him to come back. There's been a lot of criticism regarding this fight due to Tyson's old age. However, Mike Tyson had a message for those who think he cannot fight at this age. He stated, if you think I'm too old for this fight, come and tell it to my face. It's obvious that Tyson is fighting at a disadvantage considering his opponent is 20 years younger than him. Logan Paul made sure to tell Tyson to not underestimate his brother Jake, or else he'd pay the price. Man, bro, he's I look not, at, I look he's not a YouTuber. Listen, I look at him as a killer. He is, Mike. That's, well, that's how I look at him. And he's getting, like, better and better. It's crazy. I know this. I know. That's why I got to get him before he gets too good. You're right. Yeah, it's true. It's You're totally good. right. Jake Paul and Mike Tyson also had a press conference in New York recently, where the two went back and forth with the mind games. With his roots in the East Brooklyn Brownsville neighborhood, Tyson was undoubtedly the crowd favorite. The Chavitz Center audience heckled Paul when he was initially asked a question, which perfectly positioned him for his defensive response. In history, this is what it's all about for me, man. I'm a kid. Throughout the afternoon, Tyson hardly answered anything more than a single sentence, saying only, I'm feeling a lot better now. When host Ryan Clark implied that Tyson wasn't genuinely ill, but was anxious about facing Paul, Tyson chuckled and remarked mockingly, I was terrified. Additionally, Mike advised Paul to maintain his physical fitness because come November 15th, their fight could cost Paul's life. But Paul was first to react, criticizing Tyson for choosing to compete in two-minute rounds rather than three due to his advanced age. Be in shape, be in good shape, because your health depends on it. Hey, you're, you're the one that wanted eight two-minute rounds. You want, want to make it ten threes? Don't no, talk to me about shape. Don't talk to me about shape. Stay in shape, all right. You want ten threes? Okay. You want ten threes? Let's go. Be careful. You want ten threes? See, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing is... Everyone's all talk. I'll do whatever, wherever, wherever, whenever. I don't give a f Throughout the encounter, Paul provoked more anger by threatening to take Tyson out. After comparing himself to Muhammad Ali once, he subsequently declared that he is not here to do expletive besides make a bag. Nevertheless, Paul stated that this bout is a calculated move for his boxing career, despite criticism that it is nothing more than a glorified show. Jake said, There's a lot of big names out there who want to fight me. I still want super middleweight undisputed champion of the world, Canelo Alvarez, and I want to go on the path of world championship, and that's what I'm here to do, and I will make it happen. And when it does happen, people are going to go, expletive. That kid knew something we didn't. Jake Paul has also promised an equally violent end to the fight, insisting, this is history. Everyone is saying I'm going to get knocked out, but what happens when I put this man to sleep? He's saying it's going to be my funeral. He's saying it's going to be my wake. He's going to kill Jake Paul. I respect Mike Tyson, but we're not friends anymore. I'm knocking this mother out, and we'll see who's dead. Host Ryan Clark asked an equally bold follow-up question to Tyson. He said, Mike, when you hear Jake Paul say, we're going to see who's dead, what does that do to you? Does that make you put yourself in a mindset of understanding that this young killer wants to take you out? Tyson delivered the perfect retort, dismissing the claims about Paul's danger. He replied bluntly, is he really a young killer? Jake should be afraid before their battle, according to Tyson. By donning the gloves once more, the boxer who was formerly regarded as the most dangerous man in the world might be endangering himself. However, he didn't hesitate to answer when questioned on Sunday about why he was proceeding with his fight against Jake Paul. Tyson
Tyson said, because I can. Who else can do it but me? Who else is he going to fight to make this happen? Tyson further added, we've just got to listen to the facts. We've got a YouTuber fighting the greatest fighter that ever lived. However, Jake quickly backfired by saying that his opponents call him a YouTuber and a Disney, but end up on the canvas when the fight ends. We got a YouTuber fighting the greatest fighter that ever lived. Jake, when you... Every time, every time these fighters sit across from me and it's YouTuber, it's Disney Channel, all that shit, and then you end up on the fucking canvas, and you'll see, it's gonna be no different here, I promise you that. It's true that Tyson's best days are behind him, and Paul is aware that he wouldn't likely receive much credit for winning against a less formidable foe. However, the former Disney Channel star, who is adamant about becoming a boxing champion, stated that facing Tyson right now has advantages. Jake added, big moments, big pressure, big stages, one of the greatest to ever do it, more experience than me, more fights than me. I'm going to learn a lot in this fight and through this training camp, so this is helping me in my future fights and everything that I want to accomplish. The face-off was rather chill, as Tyson him jokingly punched and pushed Paul with Paul returning back the favor. Providing the fight takes place as planned, Tyson will break former rival Roy Jones Jr.'s record for having the longest spanning heavyweight career from 1985 to 2024. Anthony Joshua is praying that Mike Tyson emerges healthy from his fight with Jake Paul, admitting that the YouTube star may have the edge. AJ stated, Tyson is older now. I pray that he comes out healthy. I think Jake Paul wins because of youth. That's the only thing. Speaking about influencer boxing more generally, the former heavyweight champion added, I personally think it's really good. I think the boxing hardcores, they don't like it because they think think, why are they disrespecting our sport? But I think that influencer brings all these people into boxing, which benefits everyone else. Everyone viewing helps. Gareth A. Davies was very concerned upon hearing the news of this fight turning into a proper sanctioned boxing match. He said that he doesn't want to see a boxing legend like Mike Tyson lose to a YouTuber like Jake Paul. I, I am very concerned about the news this week that this is a, a sanctioned boxing bout that will count on the record. I do not want to read on boxrec.com or on Wikipedia that Mike Tyson in 2024 lost to Jake Paul, an influencer and a YouTuber, in uh, a veritable boxing match. It's just not right. And I think we should be concerned about his health, and I think we should be concerned how one of the greatest living icons of our sport, Spencer Oliver. Curtis Blades disliked this fight so much that he wasn't even going to watch it if it happened on July 20th. In an interview, the host asked Blades his thoughts on the fight and asked whether he planned to watch it. He said that it's a joke fight, and he won't be watching this fight. I will not be watching. I think it's a joke fight. Uh, you could tell just by how they've been interacting with the uh, ace off and the, uh, the press conference. That's not the, the Mike Tyson who's coming to rip your head off. That's an that iron Mike. Tony Bellew has also shared his thoughts on the bout. He wants to see Tyson victorious within seconds, but has already sent a warning to Paul should he overstep the mark. Speaking to Boyle Sports, he said, Mike is probably getting between 20 million pounds to 50 million pounds for this fight. I'm not going to lie, I'd do it. Everyone has got a price, but if Jake Paul hurts Mike Tyson, it would absolutely kill me. If he hurt Mike Tyson and I then run into Jake Paul, I'd chin him quite happily. I would even spend a couple weeks in the big house for that. Bellew was not happy with Jake going up against an old Mike Tyson and hoped that Mike would knock Jake out before he gets hurt. It's a sad, sad day. It's not a professional contest, really, because only women fight two-minute rounds. Men do not fight two minutes. But Jake Paul is so f***ing pig-headed that he wants it to go on Mike Tyson's record. Hopefully, Mike chins him and puts him to sleep in six or seven seconds. UFC star Colby Covington simply hated the fight as the age difference between the two fighters concerns him regarding Mike's well-being. Kobe believed that this fight would tarnish Mike's legacy. He also accused Jake Paul and his brother Logan Paul for taking steroids. I think, you know, Mike still looks like a superhuman for 58, but he's still 58 years old and, you know, he shouldn't be fighting anymore. I don't think it's safe. I think it's dangerous. At that age, your heart might explode. You know, he gets hit in the head. He might have a brain bleed. I mean, the guy, I, I, that's what I hope for. I hope for that Mike Tyson makes it through injury-free and doesn't get hurt. But I don't like the fight. The, you know, Jake's in his mid-20s. He's doing every chemical no demand. He's literally a lab project. They're just juicing him up, him and his yeah. brother. Yeah. Everybody knows that. The machine's behind him, juicing him up, putting every chemical no demand. 
So I think it's going to end bad. I think, you know, Jake's going to probably knock him out within the first two minutes. And if he doesn't, then it'll be because he's carrying him and he's trying to make the freak show look like it's a competitive fight. But I, I hate the fight. I think it, it, I think it takes away from Mike Tyson's legacy when a guy like this comes in and beats him. I, I, uh, Willie Hutchinson believes Tyson can win, given Paul's limited skills, but still shows his distaste for this fight. He said, wow, that is still happening. It's terrible, isn't it? The man is 60 years old. I still think he can beat and knock out Jake Paul even at the age of 60. He isn't worth anything. I think it's a shame, though, really. It is letting boxing down, and it is making it a bit of a mockery. I mean, what good is that doing or gaining for boxing? But everyone will buy in and watch it. It's Mike Tyson fighting Jake Paul. They are big names. It's a shame. I don't care how much money you are getting. I wouldn't jeopardize what I've done if I was Mike Tyson, just to say I am fighting Jake Paul. Roy Jones, the last opponent Tyson faced in their 2020 exhibition match, which was dubbed Lockdown Knockdown, still remembers how powerful Tyson is in his later years. In an interview with Shane Mosley, Jones was asked about the fight right away and said that Tyson was the hardest hitter he had ever encountered. He takes it serious like he took with me with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. he gonna take, I don't see Jake beating him because he's very hard to hit the old man in shape and he's mm -hmm. still a very hard puncher. Jones further elaborated on how hard Tyson hit him when they both fought. He stated, Mike Tyson is still the strongest puncher that I've ever been in the ring with, ever. Now I think he's 57, maybe 58, yet he's still the strongest puncher. The first time he hit me on my chin, I felt like a mule had kicked me in my chest. Jones' remarks carry a lot of weight since Jake Paul is preparing to fight against Tyson in November. There has been a lot of criticism directed at the fight, which will have milder regulations because Paul and Tyson are 30 years apart in age. But Paul has committed to bulking up, which Jones says is a necessary but imperfect strategy. Jones further added, if he's at 230, that can make it very interesting. Jake's not going to fight close, and he can't stay away from him because Mike will close the gap too quick, Jones commented. I thought I could stay away from him, I couldn't, and I know I'm better at staying away from people than Jake is. Jones brushed off the question, asking whether Tyson's age would slow him down or whether Paul's youth would provide an advantage. None of that fits the situation. It's a smart idea if you can push him back and you're big enough as he doesn't fight as effectively backwards as forwards. However, you have never been hit like that before, hence we have to see. Freddie Roach, another former trainer of Mike Tyson, is also optimistic about Mike and feels that he will win this fight. You know, I used to train Tyson, I like Mike a lot, and he does come by my gym once in a while to say, uh, say hello and visit and stuff, and uh, then uh, all of a sudden there's fights coming up, and uh, you know, it's a, uh, a younger, um, maybe stronger man, but you know, I can't say so. Kevin McBride, the last boxer to face Mike Tyson in a professional match, also issued a stark warning to Jake Paul as the YouTuber-turned-boxer prepares to step into the ring with the former heavyweight champion. McBride's insights offer a glimpse into the formidable challenge that awaits Paul. Despite Tyson's age, McBride believes that the legendary fighter still poses a significant threat. McBride, now 51, defeated Tyson by technical knockout in 2005 in what was Tyson's final professional fight. Reflecting on that experience, McBride shared some vivid memories of just how powerful Tyson was, even in the twilight of his career. He recalled, When Tyson hit me, it felt like my head was spinning. In an interview, McBride recollected the force of Tyson's blows. He continued by saying that he put Tyson in a headlock and teased him after the vicious punch, which only made Tyson more angry. McBride said that Tyson bit him in retaliation, causing him great pain. Even decades after his peak, Tyson still has a fiery and unpredictable style in the ring, as seen in this moment from the fight tape. In light of this, McBride gave the 27-year-old Paul some guidance. He underlined the significance of keeping up a solid defense and being keenly aware of Tyson's capricious nature. McBride advised, Tyson is a fearsome man, even in his 50s. It takes real courage to step into the ring with him, whether you're a seasoned fighter or a YouTuber like Paul. Many have suggested that Paul may benefit from Tyson's old age by providing the younger fighter a chance to win. McBride, though, quickly rejects this idea. He thinks that Tyson still has a lot of power and that it might be what wins the bout. Power is the last thing a fighter loses, according to McBride, and Tyson still packs a mean punch at his age. If Tyson connects with just one solid hit, it could be lights out for Paul, McBride suggested, indicating that the younger fighter could find himself in serious trouble if he underestimates Tyson's capabilities. McBride also hinted at the possibility of returning to the ring himself. He expressed a willingness to come out of retirement for another fight with Tyson, should the opportunity arise. McBride said, if Tyson wins and Paul wants a rematch, I'd be ready to step in again. He even offered to substitute in the upcoming fight if Tyson or Paul pulled out. Tyson Fury believes Mike Tyson Tyson will shock the world and teach the problem child a lesson when they eventually go head to head. The Gypsy King said, Listen, if Mike Tyson hits anybody, I don't care if he's 90, he's gonna knock them out cold, any. 
obviously I have to back Mike Tyson. I'm named after the legend and I'll back him. As he always backs me, I'm backing Mike for the knockout. Come on, Mike. Former undisputed champions ex-coach Teddy Atlas believes that this training could well be enough to get the job done despite his age and declined skills. He said, you better be aware. Knowing Tyson the way I do, power doesn't disappear when you're old. He's still got speed, combinations. He's still got that style that he was taught to make you miss and create openings for that power. He still has that, where he can weave, slip, create the openings to unload a bomb on your chin and get you out of there. No agreements, no funny business. This is a dangerous, risky fight for Paul. I give him credit, especially early. Tyson's gonna come out there. And if you do have an agreement with him, ha, good luck, because I know Tyson. When that bell rings, he might have a short memory about any agreement other than the agreement to put hands on your chin. Mike Tyson's power was the reason why many feared to get inside the ring with him. The aura that Mike Tyson still has at this age was well explained by Joe Rogan. Rogan shockingly revealed why he was terrified of Mike Tyson and the way his mind works. Because if Mike puts his heart into training, then he becomes a terrifying beast all of a sudden. No. So he gets in insane shape. And the next time I see him, the second podcast we do, Mike now weighs 230 pounds and he's got these muscles in his forearms. So, so he's sitting there and he's a different human. He's so intense that I was like, if this table was closer to him, I would be nervous. Like I wouldn't be able to do my best job as a podcaster. I literally, this the reason why this table is this width. This is the second podcast I did with Mike Tyson. Amir Khan believes that Iron Mike will secure an early knockout victory. He stated, The fight between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, wow, no one would have ever expected a fight like that fight to be made. Mike Tyson is a legend of the game and not someone who you want to mess about with. Even though he's older now and has been retired for a long time, he's obviously done a few exhibitions. I just feel that he can really hurt Jake Paul. I just can't believe what Jake Paul's thinking. He's fighting a heavyweight great, and I think he can get hurt badly. So what are your thoughts about this fight? Which side are you on? On. Do let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen right now.